Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Democrats and political analysts got it wrong yet again for the 2024 presidential election. I'm going to play a clip. This political analyst who was 100 percent certain that Kamala Harris was going to win the presidency. And I want you to see how smug she was when she had an interaction with a, a, a voter in which she assumed voted for President Trump. Just, I just want you to see how she, her interaction was and how her demeanor was and, and how she looked down upon those who thought different than she thought and who voted different than they, they voted. So without further ado, let me roll this clip for you. We're closing in on almost 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I've been tracking everything that's been going on across the country today. And my most important encounter was when I went out to get my champagne. Uh, I was talking to the guy in the store, of course, uh, asking him, did he vote? And he said he did early voting, and he asked me if I early voted. Uh, and uh, he asked me, you know, why I was getting the champagne. And I said, because I'm going to be toasting Madam President tonight. And he just looked at me with kind of like a smirk on his face. And I said, you know, she's she's going to win this, right? And he says, oh, well, it's very, very close. And I said, no, it's not. He says, well, what do you mean? I said, no, it's not. The women of America are making their voices heard. Reproductive rights is what it all comes down to. And the women are voting in numbers relative to men that are unbelievable. She's won this. And I said to him, she's gonna take every one of the swing states plus, oh, plus Iowa. And he said, oh, but the numbers are so close. I said, I'm a political analyst. I'm telling you right now, the numbers are there. She's taking this election. And then I said to him, you realize, and he didn't tell me who he voted for, but of course I knew. And I said, you do realize you wasted your vote, right? <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> I walked out with my bottle of champagne and happily walked home. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> uh, so, as you know, um, Kamala Harris did not win the election. Uh, as the numbers stand right now, there were 18 million fewer votes than in 2020. And as I have said all along, you have to have a huge, huge turnout and it goes to the Dems and we didn't have it. There is one fundamental thing that you cannot account for when you're using data to project, to predict or project um, the outcome of an election is you can't factor in the impact of racism or the existence of racism and misogyny so that was her analysis you can't factor in racism and misogyny they still haven't learned why president trump won yet again in 2016 they didn't get it all the political analysts all the prognosticators on cnn msnbc abc even fox news they didn't get it the people were not being heard. The people that they sent to Washington, D.C. were up there doing things according to whatever they wanted to do and weren't listening to the American people. They did take the American people into account. They were sending money to foreign countries where, while at the same time, the American people were hurting. And the American people said, enough is enough. You're not listening to me. I'm the one that put you there and I'm gonna be the one that takes you out. So they voted him out of power. That's how Donald Trump came into existence because they stopped listening to the American people. Then they decided at the end, after COVID, they wanted to change again. So they put Biden in there, somebody who's supposed to be a uniter. And as soon as he got into power, he opened up the border. He, he totally, uh destroyed uh standing on the on the world stage by pulling out of afghanistan and we lost 13 brave americans gave up a military base which ended up going to china uh, russia 
went into Ukraine, started that war, and we've been giving money to Ukraine ever since he's been in the presidency. Israel was attacked by Hamas, so we are supporting that war. We are in China, Russia, and Iran are now in cahoots together. Everything has been turned upside down yet again. You had hurricanes come through North Carolina, Florida. The FEMA wasn't nowhere to be found. And the American people, yet again, were on the outside looking in, having given their tax dollars, and their tax dollars are going out the door to Ukraine and to Israel and any other proxy war that's going on out there. And yet, when the American people came to their government and say, hey, we need your help, we'll give you $750. And then some of those were rejected and declined. And the American people say, no problem. There's an election in November and we'll just kick you out of power. And that's exactly what they done. Now let's talk about this Kamala Harris debacle. Some say it was racism and sexism, misogyny and all of that. Some say it was Biden's fault. I blame the whole Democratic Party's fault for that. They knew Joe Biden was not cognitively able to fulfill his term as president of the United States. Yet they propped him up for three and a half years. And then when he went out on that stage with Donald Trump in June and the American people saw what they already knew existed, that he wasn't fully there. Everybody knew they were lying, yet they still told that lie. That's when he decided to step aside. And some say, well, if he had stepped aside earlier, then Kamala Harris would have had a longer runway to get her message out. Actually, Kamala Harris had already gotten her message out back in the last election when uh, when uh, when Joe Biden ran and nobody wanted her because she was so extreme. And then she supposedly changed her ideas, but she couldn't explain when that transition happened, when she decided to change those ideas. She wouldn't explain her policies. She wouldn't sit down for more than one hard hidden interview. And the one interview that tanked her whole campaign is when she went on The View amongst her friends and Sonny Hostin asked her one simple question. What would you do differently than Joe Biden if you were sitting in his seat? And she simply said, I can't think of anything that I would have done differently. She was there in the room when Biden decided to pull out of Afghanistan. She was the one that passed the, the last tax bill, infrastructure bill, that was supposed to help the economy, which destroyed the economy. She was there when the United States kept sending billions and billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine and the American people were hurting. She was there when the people of North Carolina needed assistance and they couldn't find FEMA. And now it's been revealed that people, homes, that had Trump signs in, they were overlooked because somebody in FEMA didn't want to help those people who were Trump supporters. This is the reality of the Democrat Party. They have lost their way. They pushed a social agenda instead of pushing policies to help us. They were pushing the LGBTQ, let men go into females' bathrooms, let men participate in women's sports. When women when Title X was passed, it was to protect women from all of this. Yet they overlooked that. Let the men compete in women's sports. Let them take the honors that rightfully belong to women. Why couldn't they have transgender sports? Well, the transgenders compete together. Let the men compete together. Let the women compete together. Nope, we're going to combine men and women because they claim to be women. The American people have wholeheartedly rejected that concept. And no, women's rights was not the number one issue. It was the economy. And yet they still pushed it. She pushed it constantly, a women's right to choose. She wasn't nominated through a process. She was selected. Joe Biden said, OK, I nominate. I, I support her. So whose fault is that? That was the Democrat Party because they were touting having an open open process to select their nominee. Then all of a sudden they realized we can't do that because she's, quote unquote, 
a black woman. We can't overlook her and put a white person there. So they were stuck with her. And then they propped her up. And the rest is history. She was a horrible candidate. It had nothing to do with her sex. It had nothing to do with the color of her skin. Because there are a lot of successful black women in politics. She just happens not to be one of them. There's nothing wrong. Let's just be honest about it. If she was all that in a bag of chips, she should have been able to prosecute the case against Trump. She should have been able to sit down for a hard-hitting interview and give her positions on the issues. Yet and still, her only answer was that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. If Donald Trump was such a threat to democracy, then why is he sitting? In, he's going to be sitting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue come January 20th, 2025, if the American people thought that. You didn't prosecute the case properly. You didn't present a vision for this country that the American people wanted to follow. That's the bottom line. <sighs> but let me know what you think, American people. If you think Kamala Harris was somehow not put into power because she was a woman, let me know down in the comments. If you think she was not put into power because of her policy positions, let me know that as well. If this is your first time here to the Retired Vet Show, please consider subscribing, turn on your notifications so you know when I drop another video. And as always, God bless you all. Stay safe.